Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy here, back with another Blender video for you. Fun fact, I just recorded this entire video and forgot to turn my microphone on. So here we are, I've got a bit of practice. What we've done over the last few videos is we, we have worked to create this low poly terrain, which you'll recall um, we made in the last video. And it looked something like this. You can see behind me, this was my example. And we want to start to add some detail here. So I'm going to work with you today to show you how we can make a tree that looks something like this that you could stamp all over your terrain to start to add some detail. I'd like to just point out that I followed a video on YouTube by a YouTuber called, oh, just forgot, let me check, called Grant Abbott. And in his video, he details three different ways of creating low poly trees. And I've just followed one of those to learn this that I'll be going through. I'll put a link in the description to his video in case you want to go and watch those to learn some other methods as well. Okay, so let's let's do this. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to start by making a new file here and I'll can this one that I've done a minute ago. We'll start from scratch. First thing I'm going to do is delete the light and delete the camera because we're not going to use those and we just want them gone. Now I'm going to grab my cube, jump into edit mode, make sure that I'm in vertex select mode, not, not edge select or face select. We have to be in vertex select mode. I'm going to right click and choose merge vertices at center. And that will merge all the vertices of this cube, all eight vertices, into one vertex or one vertice that is that little dot there. And now what I can use is use the extrude tool just like we did in the blocky name by hitting E on the keyboard and moving this away to sort of create a line here. This is going to be a bit of a like a wireframe of the tree trunk. Oh, my face is in the way. That's annoying. Sorry, guys. I forgot to move out of the way. Let me just slide down here. Hopefully that's better. And it looks like I might be a bit too noisy. I'll just turn myself down there. Hopefully that's a bit better. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, all I did there was I had my cube. I right clicked it and chose merge at center. And then we started to hit E and extrude. Hopefully that didn't stuff you up too much. Now, now that you've started to extrude this line all the way up this tree trunk, I can come back and grab dots grab vertexes that are further down here, and I can extrude those out as well. You'll notice that I'm spinning the camera around as I do this. If you don't do that, you'll end up with a sort of very two-dimensional tree that's just kind of all of your vertexes have been moved on the same plane, and you'll have to come back and manipulate those, manipulate them later anyway by use of the move tool. So I'm kind of just making sure that you know, as I go, I'm moving this around. Okay, so you can sort of see what I'm doing here, and even that is, they're all very squashed together. So now what I'm going to do is just use this move tool, and I'm going to start to move these just to add a little bit more craziness. This tree, a little bit more non-uniformity. Okay, now I'll leave it at there. I'm not going to spend ages doing this just for a fast video. But what I can do now that I've got this wireframe of this trunk is I can select it all by hitting A. And I'm going to come over to the modifier spanner thing here. And I'm going to add a modifier called skin. And what this does is it throws on basically an outline, I guess, a sort of like a box that follows the line. And if we turn on X-ray mode, you can still see your little wireframe thing in the middle of it here. And then I could start to grab these vertexes and scale this box up or down, if you like, to make it thicker or thinner branches at any particular point. So if I select these and then hit Control A to scale, you, I could, you know, shrink those down. These ones, for some reason, have come in particularly small already. Scale those up a bit, and that one too. Say I did something funny there with my extrude tool. I must have done something wrong. I'll just leave it for now because I can't be bothered fixing it. But I think that will give you guys a bit of an idea of how you could do it. Now, say that that's good enough and I was happy with it. And I mean, you could manipulate these and move these around a lot more. But just for the sake of having a quick, a quick video here, say I'm OK with that. What I would do is hit tab to exit edit mode and apply my modifier by pressing this little down arrow and hitting apply. 
and then I could turn off the x-ray view to get my solid tree back. There's my sort of tree trunk shape going on. Looks a bit funny because of whatever happened here, but you know, that'll do. And now what I'm going to do is use add mesh icosphere. And remember when you add something before you click, you want to come down, you get, this is the only option you get to edit settings of this shape. So down here in this pop-up, I can change my number of subdivisions all the way down to the lowest one. And now I get this really low poly sort of sphere here, which I'm going to actually use as the leaves because it's low poly. I don't want to have a lot of detail in this tree. That's all I really want is this sort of thing. Now you're going to have to continually move your camera around, I guess, in order to get this positioned where you want it. Right click, duplicate objects and just drag it to wherever you want. You'll want to do that a bunch of times, maybe scale it up or down, rotate it so that it's not the same as all your other icospheres and you've got a bit of detail there and add that as many times as you want um, in order to you know, get a tree that you're happy with. And then you could go and use the same uh, method of coloring it that we've used in previous videos to add materials and give colors to things. So for example, if I grab my tree trunk here and I come to my materials tab, um, I'm going to, so this is the material, I'm going to make it a bit of a brown color. And then if we go over to solid view, you can see that's got a bit of a color on it and you could change your specular map down so that it's not too reflective. And you could do that with all the leaves as well um, and in fact I might just quickly pause and all color the leaves as well okay so there's my tree with its colored leaves and I've done a few different greens there on purpose just to kind of add a bit of detail and I've left the specular up so that it's a bit reflective just because that's what I wanted I think that looks cool and now the next thing we want to do is talk about how I could get all of this into my other blender thing into my terrain um, file so what we can do is pretty much we're going to group these together and I want to be able to grab the trunk and move the trunk around and all of the leaves come with it. So if I grab all of the leaves and then I grab the trunk last, what I can do is go to object, parent object, and now you'll see up here on your list of objects that I've got cube and then there is a little a little triangle here with a five on it. So there are five more objects attached to this cube, which obviously it's not a cube anymore. It's now my tree trunk. But if I grab my tree trunk and move it, it moves all of the leaves as well. But if I grab one of the leaves, I can move it by itself. Now that's a good thing because when you get it into your terrain and you're going to duplicate the tree, you might want to rotate the leaves around and manipulate those individually so that not all of your trees look identical. But because I've done that, what I can do is now I can select select all I'm just going to right click and choose copy objects come back to my other blender thing which was my terrain uh, my my terrain one here I'm just going to right click and go paste objects there's my tree now it's way too big I could just use the scale tool to drop that down to a scale that I'm happy with and then use the move tool to get that position to where I want it and I might go and insert that a bunch of times or basically just copy and paste it and move it all around until I get it to a point that I'm happy with. Um, that's that. So if I was CDF12 to render that, there's my tree in my low poly uh, terrain environment. This tree doesn't look as good as the one I made a minute ago when I recorded the entire video with no audio. That one looked better just because of how I made the trunk had a little bit more natural shape on it. So you could spend some time getting that correct. Anyway, I hope that helps guys. I'd encourage you to check out uh, the other video that's linked in the description that has more information about different ways that you could create different types of trees. Um, and hopefully that helps. In the next video, we're going to look at creating some grass that we can stamp all around and add some detail to the plane. So keep your eyes open for that one and I'll see you there.